Welcome. I am Larry Hoy, biker writer legend. Welcome to First Chapter, a podcast where I take the time to to introduce you to some wonderful books that you may not have heard before. So, before further ado, let's get on to it. First Chapter. After two weeks of vampires, I thought I'd try something new. This week, werewolves. This week is a uh, Howling Symphony. It's the first book of the series of the symphony series by Derek Erickson, a good buddy of mine. Derek, I'm gonna race you to the top. Anyway, let's see what we got for it going this week. Howling Symphony by Derek Erickson. Ashley's mom's death was the end of the world as she knew it. The arrival of a father she believed to be dead was her chance for a new one. Before she even had time to grieve, she was whisked away to a tiny mountain in a tiny mountain town in Montana, a world of surprising beauty and quiet she could escape in. Where the people are friendly and the mountain trails seem to go on forever. Maybe, just maybe, this new world wouldn't be so bad. But the mountains can be dangerous. In the snow, sometimes you don't see the wolf until it's on top of you. Still reeling from the loss of her mother, Ashley's going to have to make friends fast if she wants to survive. Maybe there's a reason that cute boy and his family live so far out of town where people don't ask questions. Now, if only she could stay away from him. All right, here we go. Chapter 1. Loss. Ashley woke up suddenly, sitting upright in the church pew. She, shouldn't, she couldn't have been asleep for more than a few minutes, but it felt like it had been hours. Her body sagged from exhaustion, her mind already sinking back into a stupor. She lost hours at a time these days, and it was getting hard to focus. Her eyes were locked on the same one thing she couldn't ever forget, her mother's coffin. Ashley rose slowly, unconsciously, stretching her lanky body. She was tall for a girl, just a few inches short of six feet. She brushed what used to be gorgeous black hair out of her face. Ashley planned to wash and brush it to look good for her mother. That thought had been there last night, but suddenly it was the morning. Dull brown eyes looked down at her dress and she did her best to smooth the wrinkles out. People were starting to arrive. The people arrived in small groups and they all did the same thing. They walked straight over to her mother's coffin and gave her the blessings. They would turn to Ashley and tell her they were sorry. Ashley was glad no one tried to speak to her. She didn't know them. She didn't like them. As far as she knew, her mother didn't either. Her mom had always been something of a loner. She'd spent most of her time with Ashley or nobody at all. Ashley had no father. She'd always grown up with just her mom and knew nothing about him. There wasn't even a picture in the apartment of him. Her mom told Ashley that he had died a long time ago. And that's why she didn't like to talk about him. Sometimes Ashley would catch her mother thinking dreamily of her father. Ashley didn't even know his name and had given up no on knowing. She had her mom and that was all that mattered. The minister asked everyone to be seated and started. It's always the darkest before the dawn, but some days the sun never rises. All we can be sure is the sun will return one day. Ashley's mom had always said that. It was her way of saying that there were bad times, but good would always come back. You just had to be strong enough to survive until they got there. It seemed much harder to accept her role now. It was easier to roll over and let the world consume her than fight back. She didn't have a shoulder to cry on and didn't much want one. She dug herself out of a dark hole in her mind and didn't move. She was alone and there was no one could touch her. Ashley wasn't sure, certain how long the sermon lasted. She barely remembered five minutes. A group of men moved to take her mom away so she could be buried. She followed after everyone in the church had already gone. The pitiful way they looked at her was getting tiring. Outside, she had to squint her eyes. She would have expected the day to be gloomy, but it wasn't. It was July in Sacramento, California, which meant sunny and clear. And it was so hot she could already feel sweat forming under her dress. Nobody said any inspiring words as they lowered her mom into the ground. After her mom was in the ground, everyone started to leave. Only a woman with a flute remained to keep Ashley company. 
Ashley didn't know the woman, but she knew the music. It was the same song her mom used to play for her on her flute. It was a sad, beautiful melody. Her mom used to play it late at night when she couldn't fall asleep, and even now it made her drowsy. The woman played a few more songs before finally putting the flute away. When she was done, she sat down next to Ashley. I'm sorry, Ashley. Don't be. I've heard those words enough today. I'm sure. Who are you? An old friend of Olivia's. Ashley flinched at the sound of her mom's name. Confused, she glanced over at the woman. Old friend? The woman looked barely older than Ashley. She was dressed in a long black dress, like Ashley, with long black hair, tightly bound in thick braids. Her eyes were pale brown, almost yellow. She was a few inches taller than Ashley, and had a slightly fuller body. How did you know her? That's a story for another time. Here, this is for you. She passed the flute case over and put it in Ashley's lap. I understand your mother was teaching you how to play. A little. You'll find the sheets of music in there for the songs I just played. They were your mom's favorites. If you ever need a reminder of better times, just play one of her melodies. The music has a way of fixing everything. My mom used to say that. And she was right. They sat in silence for a moment before the woman stood up and squeezed her hand. You'll be all right. I promise. And she began to walk away. Ashley turned in her seat. What's your name? The lady stopped and gave her a sad smile. I don't remember anymore. Ashley nodded in confusion. The woman left. Another minute, she left her mom with a goodbye. It seemed easier now. There wasn't anything to say. Goodbye to, but the open air. She took the flute case and headed for the street. Nobody was waiting to give her a ride. She called a taxi and headed for home. Once she got home, all of her problems would melt away into nothing. Ashley knew as soon as she got home, she was wrong. Everything reminded her of her mom. Their home, once vibrant with music, was quiet. Even the floor's familiar squeak was gone. It was as if the apartment knew her mom was gone and was mourning as well. Ashley crawled into her bed and cried. Her mom's smile broke through her tears, but it was only a photo. Ashley's eyes dried so she could hold the picture's gaze. The day was forgotten as she tried her hardest not to lose those comforting eyes. Harsh knocking and sudden daylight told her that she must have fallen asleep. She tried to shut her eyes and imagine nobody was there, but the person was persistent. The knocks came every few seconds. Cursing at the knocker, Ashley crawled out of bed. She opened the door but left the chain attached. There was a woman in a business suit standing on the other side. Hello? Miss LaBelle? Amber? Sorrell? I was your mother's attorney. We've met before. Ashley nodded. She knew Amber. They had spoken before to discuss her mom's intentions and will. What do you want? I'm here by your mother's wishes. She didn't want to leave you alone, so we've been searching for a home for you. Now no one of her co-workers had said they could take you. Ashley scoffed at her words. Take her? Made her sound like she was a dog who needed a new owner. I thought I was going to be on my own since I'm close to 18. Well, you're not that close, and it's not what your mom wanted. Here. She pulled an envelope out of her coat pocket and passed it to her. Ashley opened it and saw three things. Money, a plane ticket, and a letter. She eyed the money and moved on to the plane ticket. It left California and arrived in Montana? I'm going to Montana? Yes, to your father's house. Ashley looked at Amber as if she was stupid. My dad is dead. Apparently not. Mr. Jameson is very alive. A few weeks ago, your mother produced the address and told me to put him in the will. He's more than agreed to take you in. The plane leaves tomorrow. I don't want to, but you must. Pack up whatever you need or want 
and leave the rest to me. You can take either a taxi or give me a call in the morning. He held out a card. Ashley stared at it blankly. I don't want it. Please take it, pleaded Miss Sorrell. Something in her voice compelled Ashley to listen. Read the letter. Your mom will explain everything. The words stunned her. She took the card and closed the door without saying goodbye. She put her back to the door and sank to the floor, breathing heavily. She opened the letter. Dear Ashley, I'm sorry to leave you, but it seems the world has different plans for us. I can't change the past, but I can change your future. I know times are hard right now, and the world will only seem to get harder. I trust you to be strong and pull through. I can't rest well in the afterlife, knowing you're scared or that I left you alone. Monsters are more real than you they seem, and I won't abandon you to them. As I'm sure you've learned, your dad is alive. I wanted you to go live with him. I know I told you he was dead. I can't tell you why I said he was. I just need you to trust me. He's a good and honorable man who I still love very much. He has written me over the past years asking how you've been. I know he loves you and will take care of you in my absence. I want to remind you how special you are. I know it doesn't seem real, but life has more in store for you than just this moment. If you believe you'll never be alone, then you never will be. I will always be with you in spirit, and I'll always be watching over you. Love and kisses, Mom. Ashley put the short letter down. She didn't move. Her whole world had been turned upside down in the past week, and she wasn't sure what to do. Before, she'd liked the idea of just running away, just going to a place to start over again and try to forget about the past. Now it was happening. She wasn't so sure. Everything she was comfortable with was disappearing a piece at a time. She wanted to ask someone for help, but who could she turn to? Nobody would understand, and nobody could change what was happening to her. Her thoughts plagued her mind for hours. Only when the fading light of the day passes did she move. She looked up and realized the sun must be going down. The light was trying to creep through the blinds. Ashley rose and opened the window. The sun, partially concealed by some of the uh, buildings, but it actually made it more beautiful. And when it was gone, there was always the night sky to look at. Her life was changing, but some things never did. She walked to her room and opened her flute case. There were no tears as she put the flute together or when she blew in it to make sure it was clean and clear. Standing before the sunset, she let it all out. Ashley had never played her mom's song quite right before. She played the notes, but it never seemed to match how her mom had done it. Now she let her emotions flow through the notes. The music flew softly around her and out the open window. The sun seemed to shine one last time for her before it vanished. And the stars came out and she kept playing. She was done. She let out a feeble smile. She'd be okay. Her mom believed in her and she wouldn't let her down. All right. So that's first chapter. Derek, thank you so much. Boom, right there. Uh, a way to start off a YA, uh, a young adult series. First, we're going to break your heart. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Derek. I really appreciate you letting me uh, share your book out there. Everybody, it's available on Amazon. Drop Derek a line, tell him how much, how wonderful it was. You'll find all the links down below. Thank you very much. See you next week. I am Larry Hoy, biker writer legend. And thank you for stopping by first chapter. Uh, hope you had a great time. If you too can be a uh, first chapter book of the week, Drop me a message if you're if you're an author and you've got a book ready to share. Drop me a message. I'd love to read it. And if I haven't met your favorite author yet, introduce me. My goodness. I could also use your support. Go to Amazon and pick up the Hit World book series, especially the Sweetwater Chronicles. The newest book, boom, boom, 
Demon's Kiss is out now. Try it out there. I would love to see it. Drop your review on Amazon. Appreciate it. And I will see you all next week.